Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mark Sparks, and welcome to the Men's Room Interview Series. Today's guest, none other than Sheldon. Sheldon, man, it's a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure to see you, my friend. And before we get started, let's take a look at Sheldon's bio. Sheldon is a self-proclaimed high school nerd with a passion for learning. In high school, he spent his time reading every book he could find about women after he was terrorized for having never kissed a girl. In university, everything changed for Sheldon, and he joined the ranks of the Great Pickup Party. After coaching numerous men, Sheldon got the nickname Kaiser Sose from the popular film The Usual Suspects for his unassuming and sly approach. Now Sheldon is a coach at Rockstar Seduction and is best known for judging the hit TV show Keys to the VIP. Sheldon is referred to as the devil's advocate and always brings a sophisticated, pragmatic view to seduction analysis. He joins us today to share his knowledge with us on approaching women, social conditioning, and the importance of having strong convictions. All right, man, we're going to have a conversation because... I know uh, since last we spoke, you've been into some new things. Mm -hmm. You've been uh, expanding the horizons, if you will. So what's, what's new? What's going on in your world? Yeah, I guess what's, uh, well, what's new is, um, I mean, I've, I've partnered with Rock, uh, Rockstar Seduction recently. And I, I kind of mentioned it the last time I was here. Right. And been uh, doing a lot of coaching with those guys. But I've always uh, been coaching. I've been coaching guys actually since university, mm -hmm. uh, officially. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always, you know, kind of been my thing. I've just always helped people... To, to meet people, meet women. And you know now, I've, because of the show, um, a lot of women now come to me to, for advice. So I've been uh, working a lot with women on how to seduce men. Mm -hmm. Now, before we get into just strictly seduction and stuff, mm -hmm. as a coach, you know, why? Why do you, what's the value? Why do you do it? You know, all that jazz. Because people always go, oh, well, why do you coach now? Yeah, you know what, it's, just, it's, it's actually just sort of in my nature. It's kind of why I have a, a degree in, in education. I like to see people be successful. When someone's successful, it makes me feel good. Hmm. I mean, I'm not one of those guys who's going to hate on another guy because he's getting somebody or he's getting rich or whatever. I want you to be rich. I want you to be successful. I'm, I'm happy who I am. I want you to be there with me. I want you to be happy with me because you don't want to be surrounded by people who are upset and angry and, and feel down about themselves. Right. So that's just in my nature as a coach. Um, in terms of meeting people, it just, it's actually, it's because I struggled. I struggled. And I don't want anybody to ever have to go through that struggle <laughs> ever again. It, it was so painful. You know what I mean? Like, I would never in a million years go back. I've got a book ready for my, my kids. <laughs> Girl or boy, they're don't. getting a book on, on how to seduce, what to look out for. They're getting everything. They're not going to have to worry about failure. So you got to learn quick. So, I mean, give me from, from your point of view, what was some of the stuff, you know, because I think a lot of times, you know, people don't know. Because I'm, I'm in that boat too, right away. I'll tell you right now. And you know, I had I had my share of cheek pinches, laughed at, fake kissed, head pushed away. All like I mean, I can tell you some failure stories, and we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. But going from your end, what was your you know? Because if people know a little bit about it, but what mm -hmm. was your progression like? How did you start to learn? What kind of flipped the switch into what worked, what didn't? Uh, you know what? It was um, I guess growing up, I, I was very very short. I just had that unfortunate late growth spurt. I mean, it, it just happened that way. I was really short. I was about five foot, maybe one or two in, in, in high school. Right. And probably about 150, 120 pounds. So right away, that's a physical, you know, detriment in yes. terms of meeting women, right? <laughs> yep. And along with that, I, um, my parents, we, we moved out of the, out of the downtown core because it was sort of a, we were in a rough neighborhood mm -hmm. and I moved to a basically an all, an all white neighborhood. So I was only, we were the only black family <laughs> pretty much in, in that school. Which created another challenge, for sure. So, you know, at, at that time, I kind of just hung around kids who were, you know, other immigrants. You know, the Chinese kids who didn't come, you know, couldn't really speak English. Just kind of the, the I think of the, the, the kids that weren't really that popular. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, so I was just, I would hang out with them. I would I'd eventually, you know, hang out with other people or whatever, but... I always kind of stuck up for the, the, uh, the underdog. Right. Um, but one of the things was is that, you know, I wasn't getting any action. And, you know, when you're in grade 8, 9, 10, people are, you know, they probably already had their first kiss. A lot of them are, are trying to have sex if they haven't had already had sex and mm -hmm. various other forms of sexual activity or whatever. Right. I had none of that. So I would get terrorized for it. And I said, I need to solve this problem. So I went out and I started buying books. I bought every relationship book. I rented every relationship book from the library and just read them. And then I became the gay safe friend because I could figure out how to women thought. I could, I, could, I could talk to them. And that sort of helped me build it. And then 
um, as I sort of went from being that, I, I figured out how to go from friend to more than friend. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, uh, friend with benefits or whatever you want to call it. I figured how to make that switch. That results in a lot of guys wanting to kill me because I'd be their girlfriend's. <laughs> <laughs> their, their girlfriend's new friend. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, needless to say, I've had my nose broken three times, but um, you learn. That's how I became the man of mystery as well, because right. I learned you can't just go talking about what Everything girls you hook you up with because men get jealous. So that, that sort of helped me develop that area. And then um, from that, just a great growth spurt. And then it just it was, became easy because I, had, I already knew what to do. I already had the, the training, I guess, when I didn't have advantages of, of being average height. Because I'm certainly not tall. You're taller than me. you got a deeper voice than me. You're more alpha male. But I have enough to get by because I have the, the knowledge as well. Right. I like how you say, I have enough to get by. I'm rather, <laughs> rather humble of you. I totally understand what you're talking about in the high school thing and that mm -hmm. bring up because, I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't lose my virginity until my senior year. Mm -hmm. And you, that, yes, and that was an interesting four year, uh, four and a half years, you know, stint. And yeah. So I totally understand that where the, the mentality came from. Mm -hmm. But then you went, you know, while at that point I was kind of a little bit more informal in my learning, mm -hmm. meaning just failing and learning. Yeah. You you said you went and got into books and stuff like that. Yeah. So what methods did you start employing um, that started working? And then how did you gradually turn them into your own methods? You know what's funny is is I'm gonna give you the the, the first book I read. Okay. Because it, it's it's actually still out there in the bookstore. It's still very popular. I, I hate to plug other people's books, but it's where the, I first started. It's um, uh, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. Really? A, this is the first book I ever read to understand. Because I was like, why do these girls like this guy? You know, I, what's wrong with me? So I want to understand what they were thinking. So I got this book to understand what women think. Okay. The book has some very useful pieces. It's not going to help you seduce anyone, mm -hmm. but it'll help you to manage women. And that's where, you know, sort of my, my, my training nowadays is moved towards relationship management. If you want to understand what women need... You can start a book like that because it'll tell you things like, when women tell you a problem, just listen. They actually don't really want any help. They don't actually don't even want to solve the problem. Women like to complain. They like to talk. Yes. So you just allow them to talk. You facilitate their talk. And that's part of seduction when you pick someone up. You don't want to talk after the first five minutes. You want to you know, set it up. First five minutes, you're, you're doing your, your pickup. And then you want to get her talking. And you want to keep her talking. And women, they'll talk 90% of the time and then say, we had a great conversation. And all you said was, mm-hmm, wow. How'd you do that? That's interesting. She didn't. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> really, you don't even have to use a sentence. And you're still, she's in the, you're a great conversationalist. Yeah. You say something big about men being, you know, we're very utilitarian. We, we, mm -hmm. we have to fix things. And yeah. learning that point that you said, women don't want you to fix their stuff. They just want to tell you. And, and when, we, when I learned that in college, I remember it, it blew up my mind because I'd be on the phone with a girl. Mm -hmm. And she'd be like, bah. and I'd literally put the phone down and be talking to my boy, we'd be playing video games. <laughs> and then every time I heard a stop, I'd be like, really? Yep. <laughs> oh my gosh. And it was like, you'd have an hour conversation. She'd be like, all right, I'll talk. I'll see you tomorrow. And you'd be like, what? What conversation? I, right. It doesn't matter. Wow. So what else, what else do you uh, kind of start teaching guys about? Well, like how you said, managing as opposed to, you know, pick up. Because that's the, I guess, the easiest part of the art now, you know? Yeah. I mean, to get a number really is not hard. I mean, you're in a bar. People are drunk. It's very dark. <laughs> there's, there's lots of advantages there. And so people just, oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Here's my number. Right. The problem is, is that you have to transition from the number to you know, a date. And that's where it, it becomes more difficult. And then when you get the date, you gotta be able to be effective on the date so that you can get a relationship. Right. Right? Or you know, maybe you don't want a relationship, but whatever, you need something to whatever progress. Whatever length of a relationship is, for sure. Yeah. So um, I always talk about, you know, have an objective in mind. W what are you going out to do tonight? You okay. Know, what are you going out, are you going to meet someone for a relationship? Are you going to meet someone for, you know, just to hang out, have some dates, you know, whatever it is, you need to have an idea in your mind of what you want to do because that should dictate the type of pickup you use. If you're looking for, if you're just trying to get numbers, right. if, you, if you just want to go and get numbers, uh, you need to conduct yourself in a certain way in the club or in the bar or wherever. And that may not be your personality, right? Okay. You're, right, you're being somebody that 
is not really you in order to facilitate you meeting more people. And that's OK if you're just trying to meet people. The problem will occur is when you go to a relationship now, and she's like, yo, you're completely different. Right. Right? You, you've been somebody different, so now how can you switch it on them? I mean, but if it's just for a temporary, you know, I need to meet someone for a couple months, or this girl's hot, I want to date her, but I know she's dumb as rocks, I don't want to marry her, you know, then you can do that. Right. You know, so it all comes down to what your objective is before you step out. Okay. So what do you work on with these guys, you know, with that objective in mind, mm -hmm. what comes next in the equation? So I know I'm going out tonight, you know, I come to you and say, all right, man, well, I, just, I want to go out and, like, I haven't had sex in, in six months, so I just want, I want to go out and meet something that I can mm -hmm. sleep with. Well, I would have obviously advise them not to just go out, meet someone and have sex with them because you might get burned literally and figuratively. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, that's okay. And, and usually when I, when I work with those guys, it's, um, it is guys that want to just meet, they want to meet a girl. Like they've never, they're just like, listen, I'm struggling. I just want to meet somebody. So they don't care what it takes. And that's really easy. All you need to do is, is, is look at the basis of, of uh, you know, real social dynamics. It's looking at the way humans interact. And you know, in all you know, societies, there's the interplay between power, relationship. There's social mores that you need to be aware of. And all we do is teach these guys what is the most attractive you know, way to conduct yourself behavior-wise mm -hmm. in that social situation that'll you know, draw women to you. So if you look at, if you look at, the, at the playground when you're kids, um, the, the guys who are really cool, really popular, you know, they kind of had all the girls around. They kind of, they didn't just stay with one girl, right? Mm -hmm. In the playground, I'm saying. They yeah, kind of no, bounced yeah. around and kind of played, played there, with everybody. Played and, and all the girls were wanting to play with him because he was, he was that guy. Essentially, you're trying to become that guy in the bar situation. One of the things when you, you have to obviously practice how to open sets, and we can go into various ways to open sets, yeah, you know, whether sure. it's a, a situational opener, which is what I tend to use, um, you know, opinion openers, direct openers, whatever it is you do, uh, you know, we can teach a bunch of those little techniques. You go in there, you, you open the setup, and then you sort of build your value up, and then you step away. Right? You're, you're letting her know that I'm a fun guy, I'm safe, I'm having a good time. Now, a lot of people would say, you just left the set, you're going to lose that girl. Maybe. But if your opening's good, right? if you have a really good opener, she's going to remember it, number one. And number two, you, the key is to keep yourself moving around. So she'll see that you're a popular person within the, the space that you are in. Right. And therefore, you're a person of power, social value, and that's what she wants. Right. And therefore, you know she'll be drawn to you. You can continuously reopen a set because you've opened it and left it before you got kicked out, if you know what I mean. Right. So you got that 5'7 brunette. Um, you know, she's standing over there with two of her friends. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a, an R&B track playing, so it's a nice vibe. <laughs> and she's sipping on a red drink. Can't tell what it is from here. Mm -hmm. And I want to go talk to her. Yep. You know, I want to go open that set up and, and build up my value. How mm -hmm. would you... How would I open that set? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of the situational opener. Okay. I would look at the group and where they are and what they're doing as I walk up. And okay. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an adrenaline junkie as well. <laughs> that <laughs> so helps. So you can, you can, you know, have canned openers. Um, like an opinion opener is always good, you know. Hey, I got to ask you a quick question. You know, okay, let me break down that, that opener right there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can I ask you a quick question is a false time constraint, right? Right away, she figures, even this guy is a a loser, he's going to ask a quick question and he's going to buzz off. So I'll just listen to him to just get it over with. Right. Right? So her guard comes down. She's now allowing you to create a situation where you're going to pick her up. Mm -hmm. And then you ask an opinion opener. So, you know, do you think guys lie more than, than girls? She has to respond because, you know, in, in our society, it's, it's rude not to respond when someone asks you a simple question. Right? If I asked you what time it was and you just looked at me, Right. You'd be it's awkward, society, right? right? It, you'd, you'd be like, okay, time is that a... Right. So when you ask her opinion, now she's got to think about the response and she gives it to you. And then you just can work off those responses with, you know, various sets you have in your mind. If it's men lie more than women, then you say, are you sure about that? Or is it just that, you know, women just do a better job and never get caught? And then she has to respond again because I asked another question. And you just keep this question sort of situation going to keep her talking. Right. 
And then, you know, from there, you know, you may just say, hey, look, I'm having a good time. I got to meet my friends. I'll be back. It was great talking to you. And you just keep moving. How do you train guys to realize that? Because you know a guy who hasn't been able to get a good response mm -hmm. from one, i.e. conversation. Right. You know, I've just gotten her to respond to me three or four times. And I'm just like, I'm, like, I'm in. Oh, my gosh. She's you want me to leave this? What's right. the value in leaving? If you just look at the way, you know, that, that social interaction occurs, I mean, if you look at the people who are most popular in a club, it's usually the guys who are, you know, promoters or, um, you know, club owners or whatever. Yeah. Watch how they behave when they're in their, the club, in their environment, right? They kind of know everyone. Hey, how's it going? Da-da-da-da-da. Right? That's what you're, that's sort of the situation you're emulating. Right. That, that's what's attractive, you, you know. It's control, it's power, it's prestige. That's interesting you talk about because it's something I, you know, I definitely work with mm -hmm. people and talking to them is modeling. Mm -hmm. And you model successful models. You see people doing things that you want to do. And it's not right. necessarily you copying them, but you're taking the strategies that you're using. And mm -hmm. it's interesting that you say because it, it is. The promoters, the, the owners, the, you know, the, the, the bartender, the VIP guy. Or yeah. Those are the ones who know everybody and walk through and, hey, hey, girl, it's, hey, how you mm -hmm. doing? And they're not necessarily, you know, they have an ability to detach. So that's a powerful thing you talk about, too. Mm -hmm. It's funny you said that. I was just actually thinking of actually uh, one of the great openers that I actually teach guys to use. Okay. And it's actually kind of sheer luck how I came up with it. Um, one of the things that if I see a guy getting shot down, I'd be like, that's interesting. I'd walk up to her. What happened there? Why did you shoot him down? And right away she has to respond. And as she's sort of telling you why she shot this guy down, I obviously would respond in ways that would make me not like that guy who got <laughs> shot down. <laughs> Right, and that's a powerful one. It's a powerful tool. But I was really only going, I originally was only going there for information purposes. I was just doing research. I was like, that's a good looking guy. How do you get shot down? Walk right up. He's a good looking guy. Why'd you shoot him down? He was this, he was that, he was that, blah, blah, blah. And she would just give me all the reasons. And I would, okay, now I'm understanding what women are thinking, number one. And two, I can also pick her up because now she's exposed herself. She's told me what she's looking for, what she needs, what makes her happy. Hmm, I just happen to fit all these things now that we've said it. Hey, why don't we go out some time and, you know, whatever. Right. It's funny, too, because even when you said that, I've used that as well. And I use the same, it, when I say use that, I've asked that question of women, mm -hmm. um, particularly when, in the time when I was working in clubs, because it was like a way for me to learn. Mm -hmm. And what I started to see was it worked so well for me because my intent behind talking to them wasn't, I need to sleep with you. I think you're hot. That right. it, it was just a matter of, hey, for real, what happened right there? Yeah. And then you just, I found myself, hey, I'm just talking to her. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care what you say. I just want to know. Like, I don't care if you like me or not. I want to know. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, they're like, well, how come you, as you continue to talk, how come you don't like me? Hey, look at, you know, exactly. hey. I, and they start peacocking up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, well, oh, oh, hey. Yeah. So, and you start, you know, and that was my experience. Did you kind of start to see the same thing with Exactly. That? That's exactly. And, and it, actually, when you teach guys how to, you know, approach people, that helps when they're not going in there thinking, I got to get a number, I got to get a number. Whereas you're just going in to talk. You're going in to ask a question. Go in there for information purposes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that completely allows them to relax and, and get rid of the anxiety. Because that's really, once you're nervous, women can feel that. And they're like, yeah. something's wrong. You know, and they, they, they're going to shut you down. Right. So you got to be calm. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's funny to watch when, you know, even myself seeing myself nervous versus seeing you're real calm and not caring and mm -hmm. total different reaction. See, I'll tell you this. This is the danger. I talk, this is one of the first things, my first lesson when I teach guys. Okay. There is a danger in learning how to seduce other people. And the danger is you will no longer put up with anybody's shit. The problem is, as you know, no matter how beautiful a woman is, there's some guy who's sick of her shit. You're going to have to put up with women's Always. shit, yeah. right? <laughs> uh. But when you can have the ability to go out and meet somebody every single time you go out, mm -hmm. then you don't actually put the time in to, to build, deal with their issues right. right or whatever it is or you know women women get crazy they're hormonal like it's a, it's i'm sorry it's just a fact but every 28 days there's a good chance she's going to be a little bit crazy yes yes and I you know. have to accept that you got to fight through it but if you you know abuse your power because you know <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility yes <laughs> you'll just keep going out and meeting somebody else and meeting somebody else and meeting somebody else and then you'll become almost addicted to it you know what i mean did you ever find 
when you went from, you know, and I always, the term zero to hero, how mm -hmm. guys, did you ever find there was a point where you were just, you were meeting and meeting and meeting and meeting and meeting, and then all of a sudden you're just like, I can't handle, I don't want any of you in my life right now. It's strange, I guess, I always tried to, um, actually, okay, wait, I did realize. There was a, a point when, when I was training at, at, at a, you know, a while back, and what we do to train was execute five pickups per night. And I'd be going out usually uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday sometimes, or even a Tuesday, throw that in there. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I remember the Tuesday night was always nice back in the day. Right. So you're meeting, you know, 20 to 25 women a week. Right. Do that for a year. You pretty much, you pretty much know the entire city. Yes. And that's what I realized. I'd go out and I'd be like, oh, yeah, she's familiar. I picked her up here. Oh, yeah, I picked her up there. Oh, yeah, I picked her up. There was a clubs I, I, I actually had met the entire club, yep. literally. You know what I mean? So then I was like, okay, I've trained enough. <laughs> I, need to, I need to zen out for a second here. I need to here. just relax. I need to roll this back a little bit. It's uh, funny because I remember this two, the two incidents that, that got me when I was put myself, we did the same thing with training. And, you know, we'll talk about this afterwards too, is we used to put ourselves, we used to put, uh, play the games, yep. you know, in the club. And force each other to, you know, one-up each other. Like, you know, one game we played, I remember, was the limp. You had to walk over to a girl like you had this horrible <laughs> limp and still get over the physical, yep. you know, impediment and, and, and get her to like you. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I remember when training went too far was, I was at a club and I, I met this girl and we were talking and conversing and she was really, like, we were really vibing. I was like, man, like, I just came, I just met you. Wow, this is easy. And then I was like, at the end of it, I was like, hey, well, you know, I was like, well, you know, what's going on later? You know, we need, you definitely need to give me your number. Uh, I might even mm -hmm. have to kick it later. I'm going to go get my boys down. And she was like, my number? Mark, you already have my number. Yeah. And I was like, oh, um, yeah, probably, probably should slow it down. And, you know, and then I, yeah. we all had the angry in club. And someone's friend brings over the friend that you've already picked up. And you're like, hey, oh, y'all know each other. Oh. <laughs> I need to take a break from this. And it was kind of the dramatics, but so I, 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 I can understand that, okay, I've, I've limited my city, now it's time to, yeah. the next step in, you know, I think what comes in pickup, uh, as we call it, is, is the evolution of self. Mm -hmm. And, Absolutely. you know, how, does, how do you, how do you, what do you, what's your view on that, if it's at all any view? Yeah, I think, I think it definitely will occur, kind of once guys get over that hump of, of just trying to meet somebody and, and realizing that, you know, you are good enough. You are good enough to, to have somebody in your life. Then you start to realize that it's about the quality of the person in your life. Mm -hmm. And then, you're, you know, you realize that meeting people every day, is, it's, it's pointless if it's not a true, a true connection. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I definitely, it's, it's funny, I, I kind of, as Keys was getting started, I kind of already was at that point. I kind of had already been there, done that. You know what I mean? And... Um, the only thing that would ever sort of, I mean, I had a, a girlfriend at the time, and she'd be like, if a guy was challenging me, she'd be like, go ahead, show him, show him. And you're like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but at a certain point, you're like, this Fine. is stupid, right? right? I, don't need to, I don't need to prove anything right now. So right. Um, there was just definitely that, that, that change. So well, let's, get some, let's get some practical stuff, because I know you have a, a, a lot of experience in, mm -hmm. that, in that realm. So how would you deal with a guy who was, you know, a cock block. Yeah. Um, the, the best thing right away is to use humor. Uh, use humor to, you know, diffuse the situation, make the other person look like an idiot. Um, that's typically the, the route that I go. I'm pretty good at, at Punch clever lining. things and one-liners. <laughs> I'm not nearly as good as, as Peaches and some of the other guys, but I can hold my own. Um, the other thing I always use is um, you create... One of the things... Okay, you sort of play this psychological game. Okay. Uh, one of the things that women, or people in general, I shouldn't say women, people in general don't like to be told what to do. Yes. In general, right? Without a doubt. So if you say to a girl, oh, looks like this guy really likes you, maybe you should go pick him up, you know, right away she's like, I don't have to do that, you know what I mean? Or, I, don't, I don't care. You know, you play that psychological game. If, if you've done a, a good opener, you know, you can almost play that card because mm -hmm. it makes you look confident, like, go ahead. Go ahead, go try that guy. I don't know. He looks like he's pretty desperate, but you can do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. right was... You're playing that little little twist. Right. Right. So there's, or you can address it head on. And and I've I've been in um. I've been in a couple situations. Just got a flashback to. Uh, <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I almost caught a rage. I was like, Bing! okay, let me give you a story. I mean, that's what we. Yeah, I can, can give you a story. You can give me a story. 
um, I was at a, at a club with a girl. I brought her with me to the club. So it's not like I was trying to seduce her, you know. You're already there. We're having cool. a good time. Right. We're having some drinks. And she kept moving kind of awkwardly. Like, you know, we're dancing. And all of a sudden, she'd turn around. I'm like, OK. <laughs> then at the time, she had her arms around the back of my, my neck. And, you know, she's like kind of switching sides. And I'm like, what's? I said, what's going on? She's like, no, no, it's OK. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So right away, I'm like, OK, some guys, some guys <laughs> acting up, right? Right. So we continue, you know, no problems. Then her arms are behind my neck again. And her hands shoot down. So I'm like, OK. You know, once, twice, three times, she's basically said she's not interested. And you do that, that's disrespecting me. Right. Right? And at some point, you got you to gotta step up. Right, absolutely. So she's, I said, OK. She saw it in my eyes. She said, don't do anything. I said, I won't do anything. Turned her around. And then I turned around. And I said, I want to see who was there. And there was two guys. And one guy was probably as big as you, a little bit more filled out. And it was a little short dude. <laughs> so I looked at the tall guy, and I'm like, you know, it has to be him. It's on, right? So I said, listen, I can understand that you want my girl. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk away. I'm going to go and buy a beer. And I'm going to give you that five minutes to pick her up. When I come back, if she goes with you, I will give you my beer. If she shoots you down, I want you to go away and not bother me again. And he just looked at me and said, it was him. <laughs> and that dude turned and ran, right? But right there, number one, I didn't lose my temper, right? right? Because people who are overly emotional are weak, usually, right? Yes. Women see power in, in calm. When situations get crazy and you're calm, that's a sign of strength, mm -hmm. right? So I handled it with strength. And I also didn't show fear. I didn't back down in terms of, you know, this guy's a bigger man than me or whatever. Right. No, you got to let people know sometimes you're willing to go that mile. Right. Right. And I, I didn't want to have to go that mile. But once he saw it in my eyes, I was ready to go that mile. You know, I mean, obviously, I picked the biggest guy. I figured he's the only one who had that much disrespect. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's a little dude who was very frustrated. So, right. you know, that's how you handle a situation like that. I didn't get angry. I didn't fight. I didn't, you know, I didn't wild out or anything. I just dealt with it in a calm way. If he had got my girl, all the power to him, right? Mm -hmm. I obviously didn't have my game tight enough. I take that as a learning opportunity. Yep. Right? Buy him a drink. He's teaching me. Give him a, and make it peaceful and move on. Make it peaceful and move on, right? So that's, that's, how, I, that's how I manage those kind of situations. That's a, I like um, how you handle it. And, you know, I have similar as you said. I was like, yeah. Because, <laughs> um, you know, um, The Art of War, Lao Tzu, and you think of Robert Greene, who wrote the 48 you know, Laws of Power. Yep. And they both, quote, too, yeah. who, are, who are very powerful, um, you know, very powerful writings, mm -hmm. both talk about being in control of your emotions. Right. For, you know, being too emotional doesn't allow you to think. Yeah. And not thinking doesn't allow you to act as your true self. Mm -hmm. And so it was very powerful that you can center yourself and be able to be in that situation. And that also obviously helps in the pickup, right? Yeah. Or in the seduction or in the attraction. You always got to be ready to lose or let go of that which is right. not yours. And if it's not yours, stop holding on so tightly. Exactly. You know, and, and yeah. that's, so that's a powerful point. Um, I want to think back to some of these games that you, you guys came up with back in the day to, to, to practice. <laughs> I mean, both, both in the show, but even more so where they originated, uh, as we've talked about in your university days. Mm -hmm. How do you feel like that stuff has really helped you not so much in pickup but in more relationships with women and with people, and then also just in your, in your job, in your mm -hmm. daily interaction, in your confidence? How do you think that stuff kind of is translated over? Well, I think um, seduction, the techniques, the tools that you use there, mm -hmm. um, actually can be used in networking. So I actually do teach networking. I've actually um, I've been at the local colleges to teach networking skills. Um, I've, I've done a couple of guest speaking with um, the boards of education. I mean, it's the same information. It's just how you use it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, at the end of the day, okay, yes, women love to talk a lot and like to talk about themselves. Men like to talk about themselves too. We just, in general, mm -hmm. like to talk about ourselves, that's right? That's what people, yeah, for sure. Right? There's nobody more interesting than, than you. And that's what you can play on when you're you know, in a networking situation. You know, a lot of people will think, I got to get a job. So when I go out, I'm going to basically talk about myself and try and tell them why they should hire me. I'm like, it's a networking event. Nobody really wants to hire anybody there. It's not going to happen there. But if you can make an impression on that person, 
then they'll remember you, which will allow you to, you know, get in the door, get in the door mm -hmm. for an opportunity for a real job. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, networking, how to open conversations when you're sort of the, the odd man out, you know, mm -hmm. if you go there by yourself. And it's the same way you use it in seduction. So, for example, uh, one of the things I always, uh, I, I've, I've always kind of done is when I walk through a place, I listen to the conversations going on around me. Because if I even get one tidbit of good information, I will use that again later, right? So if it's a, a girl and she mentions, like I remember this, it was a, a girl and she mentioned that she liked that really cheap Manchu wok Chinese food, right? And I just happened to hear it. And I just kind of walked, looked at her and I was like, she's hot. I'll remember that piece of information. <laughs> Stored. <laughs> <laughs> Stored. And in the night she walks by, I'm like, hey, can I ask you something? She's like, what? I'm like, you look like you would like really cheap Chinese food. And she was like, what do you mean? And I'm like, yeah, you wouldn't like that like expensive stuff. You'd probably like that Manchu wok, that cheap Chinese food. And she was like, what are you talking? How'd you know? <laughs> you know, need I say more, it just kind of right. went that way. Yeah. Now, if you're in a, in a corporate situation where you're trying to network for a job, if you hear somebody talking about the value of a company or whatever, boom, listen to it, boom, grab your Blackberry out, do a little information, swing back around that person, and then you can mention it. Oh, yeah, I heard you mention this company, blah, blah, blah. You know, recent stock report said yada, yada, yada. And, you know, right away, the person thinks you're intelligent, you have really good recent knowledge. Yeah, it took you two seconds to go and Google, you know, the information, but right. who cares? Right. You got that piece of information that you were able to use later. Mm -hmm. So you've, you can target it. If, you, if there's someone specifically you'd like to meet, that's how you'd use it. Right. What are some of the biggest obstacles mm -hmm. that you, and obviously there's a wide range, and I know, you know, but that you see with guys who are trying, I take away that word, with guys who are working on getting better. Mm -hmm. What's some of the biggest obstacles you see? They take information and they apply it exactly as it's given to them. What you need to do is take that information and then make it your own. Mm -hmm. You need to change it and find what works for you. So, um, you know, I can give people a step-by-step -step pickup. Right. You know, what she'll say, the responses that you'll have off those, and the responses off those, and I can do it for probably a you know, good five or ten minutes. I could break that down for you mm -hmm. in a really large web. Right. But the point is not to do that. The point is to take that and make those pieces your own. What about you is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I'm really good at not telling information. I can talk for an hour and not tell you anything. You know what I mean? That's, that's just how my mind, is, my mind works, right? I'm trying to control the information flow. Right. And usually I don't want to give any out. I'd rather accept your information, give you non-answers so that I can adjust later what I'm going to respond to you. Right. So, you know, I try and I tell guys to, you know, understand who you are. What, what, is, what is it about you that's interesting? If you're really a big jock, right, you don't want to necessarily cry every time you see a girl. It's not, it's not, that's not what she's expecting, right? It doesn't right. match. So understand how you're perceived, use that information, and then use it to your advantage. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you could play the strong, silent type a lot easier than a guy who's really short. Because, you're, you know, you're, your presence speaks. Yep. Right? So if it's a short guy, we say, no, don't try to be the strong, silent type. You're going to get lost in the shuffle. You're not tall enough. You don't stand out enough to make that happen. So, it's, you know, it's all about taking information and using it, applying it. Mm-hmm. That's very powerful. I mean, it's always, you always tell people, um, and you've said this time and time again, use what you have, mm -hmm. you know, and as I can be the strong silent type, you know, you'll see someone who's smaller than I am, they can get in really close to a girl and, 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 and you know, talk right. real, real, because when a guy, if we're the same size as me and I get up and talk to her, she's like, oh, well, that's what you have to do just to talk to me. Or is it, I get in her space right mm -hmm. away, it's kind of like, okay, you're crowding me, you're big, I'm scared of you, back up. And so there's the pro and con in that. The show was interesting. I mean, I, want, I don't want to talk about the show, mm -hmm. but I want to talk about what was learned from the show. Mm -hmm. Because in watching that um, and in reading a lot of letters, I mean, it's interaction, interaction. A lot mm -hmm. of the guys I work with, a lot of people you work with, in watching that and reading letters from a lot of the guys at home here, um, very interesting in what people think is an appropriate Oh my gosh. In certain situations <laughs> and such. I'm so happy you mentioned that. There's some things I've found troubling. This, yeah, like really worrisome. <laughs> because troubling. people believe, hey, this is This, this is, is how fresh. you pick up somebody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think we had that issue with um, 
uh, Fromeo's episode where he told the girl that she's the ugliest girl in here and he'll still take her home. <laughs> I, my trouble with that is you can't really use that effectively. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could try that and maybe once in a million it'll work, but you're going to get either shot down or slapped the other 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. So that's not a good game. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I, I would never use that. Like, I, I'm not into lowering someone else's self-esteem. And this is the biggest problem I have. Right. right. You know, you're, you're basically lowering someone's self-esteem just so that you can accomplish something for yourself. Or, mm -hmm. or, so, I, I mean, I don't agree in that. But the reality is, is that there's people out there with low self-esteem who are attracted to people who tend to lower it even further because that's what they're used to, mm -hmm. right? People only do to you what you allow them to. Right? I totally agree. So those women, if that's the way they want to get treated and that's the way they want to get picked up, that's their prerogative. Why? I don't know why that offends everybody. Mm -hmm. Why does everyone have to, you know, want to be treated well? Mm -hmm. Right. So it, it's it's you know counterproductive and or sort of odd to me that someone would want to be treated poorly, but you know they always say you treat a girl like dirt, she'll stick to you like mud. Right. <laughs> that 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 idea didn't come out of nowhere. Right. The truth is is that. You know, a lot of times if you build uh, the attraction between somebody and then you start to treat them badly, it reminds them of when they were in, uh, you know, kindergarten or elementary school when the, the boy that they liked picked on them, mm -hmm. right? Because he didn't know what else to do. He'd push Boy, her over and yeah. pinch her. That's what they think this is when the guy's treating them like crap. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's the way our society has been built. What do you want to do? We want to fight the way society's set up? It is what it is. It's an interesting thing because social, social conditioning mm -hmm. speaks about a lot of, uh, of these things and says it's wrong. Like, oh, you guys are disgusting on the show. Mm -hmm. But seeing, I mean, hearing you say that, where it's like, that's, it is what it is. And we're merely, you, you try to figure out how to be the best you, regardless of what it is. Right. Let me give you another example. One of, the, one of the things that come out a lot. They say, okay, well, I'm the proponent for lying, right? I was like... Sheldon, you're teaching guys how to lie. You always talk about lying and being good and whatever. The truth is, if, and if you look at you know, all kinds of psychology and whatever, if children don't learn to lie by the age of two, mm -hmm. you know, results will show that they'll actually do very poorly in school. They'll uh, make less money, etc. Children learn to lie at a very young age because they need to manipulate you. right? If we went around saying everything we really felt, I mean, number one, the world would probably be burnt down because we'd all kill each other, right? And we wouldn't be with each other mm -hmm. because you, there's things you just need to not say. You cannot say certain things. And when people ask you direct questions about something, you need to learn to lie. It's, a, it's a, an important tool. If you can't lie, I can guarantee you you're not successful. That's the bottom line. Lawyers, they sit there and they lie all day, all night. That's what they do. They are successful. When your boss says, hey, I got this project for you. Are you excited to get started? If you say, no, and I think you're an idiot, I guarantee you, you won't be employed very long. The bottom line is you need to lie in this society. I definitely think society, again, and we talk about social conditioning, it sets it up so that you cannot air your opinion openly and honestly with everybody you encounter. Right. So what do you say to the guy who says, I can't change, I'm a nerd, I'm this, I'm that, I have all these weaknesses, mm -hmm. uh, I don't care what you say, you know, mm -hmm. it's not, I'm, I suck. You choose to suck, right? If, if you're a nerd, if you're this, you're that, you can change all of those things, right? You know, and I talk about it before in, in, in various shows and, and teachings. You know, people say, well, if you got yellow teeth, there's Crest White Strips, 15 bucks, right? You smoke, you, you know, whatever, pop those on, it'll improve your smile. You wear glasses. Glasses, unfortunately, are not that attractive unless you're in a a corporate situation, you know, et cetera. But if you're in a club, unless it's your look you're going for and you make it look really stylish, you need to go and get some contacts, right? Because it sort of shows that you're deficient in terms of your physical nature. Sure. You know, you're not perfect, right? Sure. You know, are you a nerd is because you're skinny and overweight? We have gyms all over the world. You know, you don't have to even go in the gym. You can go and pick up uh, a little yoga video, you can grab some dumbbells, you can do push-ups and sit-ups. Herschel Walker did a thousand sit-ups and push-ups every day. And That's he all he did. And he was a beast. Right. Yeah. There's no, ex there's no excuses. If you are unsuccessful at meeting women, it's because you chose to. If you don't know what to say, you know, ask her you know, where she got her purse, blah, 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 you're looking to get something for your mom. Who cares? 
just you got to you got to get better at things. You can't just accept being a loser or being unsuccessful in anything. And I don't care what it is. If it's unsuccessful in school or or work, there is a way. Don't ever say I can't do it because he's smarter than me. Right? All you got to do is study twice as hard as him. Right? You chose not to study twice as hard and that's why you don't know as much. Right? Mm-hmm. God gives everyone gifts, right? You may not have the gifts, but you can still improve. Right. Right? I'm not a natural basketball player, but I studied basketball. Right. I studied what to do. Right. So I'm not really natural at it, but I guarantee you, even though you're taller than me, I'll get some points if we played one-on-one. Right. Right? I'll le- I know how to move my body, a little pump fake, whatever it takes. I've studied these things. You can study anything and learn it. At the end of the day, life isn't fair, yeah. and we're not created equally. Yep. You know, some people have grew up in better neighborhoods, have a better education system, have more parent, better mm-hmm. parenting intuition. Some people grew up on their own, you know, went to a better school, had more opportunities. I could go on and on and on with equality. The only thing that's equal ever is how many hours we get. And, and, mm-hmm. and that's a big thing because that means we all have 24 hours in a day. Right. And what you said, if you want to study, it, what you do with that will create who you are. Absolutely. And your habits will create what you become. Yeah. So that's, I, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, it was a pleasure before, and it's a pleasure again. <laughs> and I look forward to the pleasure the next time we get to sit down and talk, man. Absolutely. Sheldon, thanks for coming into the interview. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, man. Gentlemen, Mark Sparks, Men's Room Interview Series. We'll see you next time.